Hello there. Some years back, uh, I wrote a column for uh, The Ecologist in uh, London. In that article, I was trying to describe or compare how a farmer in India would compare vis a vis a, a cow in uh, European Union. In that article, I was trying to uh, look at, among other things, as to what would be the kind of income that a, that a farmer receives in India. On an average, I found out that the uh, average income of a farmer in India would be about $40 a month, let's say about a little more than $1 a day. Whereas if you look at the cow in the Western world, a cow would receive about uh, $2 every day as subsidy. Now, at that time when I wrote this, I did not realize that it would hit the sensitivity of sensibilities of economists all over the world. You know, I was very surprised that it did create a kind of a furor. And uh, whether it was the UN Human Development Report, it was the World Development Report, they all started looking at the kind of subsidies uh, developing countries farmers get vis-a-vis -vis the subsidy support that the cows or the dairy sector gets in European Union, America, and uh, so on. In that uh, article, what came out uh, very clearly was the kind of subsidies that uh, OECD countries were providing to the cows, for instance, or which uh, I would say broadly is, are the subsidies that go to the dairy sector uh, would be or would make uh, each cow travel around the globe in a business class. So that was the kind of subsidies that were provided at that particular time. Now, over the years, you know, I remember in the WTO, the all emphasis was to reduce uh, or to phase out uh, the subsidies, milk subsidies in European Union and in America and other OECD countries. Uh, it did start happening. It did start happening. And uh, but when the prices dipped uh, to, to less than, you know, 0 0.20 euros a liter, uh, sometimes in 2008, 2009, European Union was the first to reimpose uh, subsidies and America followed by, uh, by also bringing back these subsidies. They blamed each other, but in, 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 in essence, what they did was they all started providing subsidy support to dairy sector again. And the result was that instead of production coming down, milk production coming down in European Union as well as in America, uh, we saw that the European Union alone uh, cornered the global uh, trade in milk. 32% uh, share uh, was uh, belonging to, Amer uh, to, to European Union. And uh, on the contrary, if you look at it, a country like India, which has uh, the, uh, the largest production of milk is in India. The next, of course, producer is America. And the milk production goes up in these countries. But over the years, we have seen while the milk production continues to go up in India, uh, the dairy sector is in crisis and farmers are economically uh, facing the burden of supporting uh, the, uh, the large herd A and also supporting uh, the consumers as far as the milk prices are concerned. It is time to look into why the dairy sector in India uh, has not come up with the manner or has not uh, built up the kind of economics that uh, the European farmers or the American farmers have been able to do over the years as far as the dairy sector is concerned. In the European Union, there are about a million cows uh, uh, million cows and over the years the number of cows of course has been coming down but then uh, as I said earlier in 2009 they reintroduced agriculture subsidies and subsidies went into all kinds of uh, activities as far as cows were concerned you know, or the dairy sector was concerned there were subsidies for milk production there were subsidies for cheese there were subsidies for you know exports and there were subsidies for all kinds of uh, int uh, things that were related to, to, to the dairy sector and much of these subsidies of course went to the uh, large producers as a result of which what happened was that the European farmers the European dairy farmers became insulated or were, in, were insulated from the volatility of the international markets so whether the prices go up or prices prices go down European farmers are not impacted with because they get uh, you know subsidies whether producer subsidies or milk subsidies or you know subsidies for or by way of milk intervention prices and so on and so forth so in a way uh, the entire sector was uh, so insulated or so taken care of that uh, the the uh, the production of milk went up in those areas you know and these were those um, you know industrial driven farms uh, which which of course cause a lot of environmental damage uh, but then they got the buttress they got the impetus they got the um, you know thrust uh, by way of the subsidy support that continued in america also uh, simultaneously we saw that although the number of farms had come down in america the subsidies had gone up over the years in, in america and we have seen that the subsidy phenomena is not only 
only uh, you know somehow the imagination is that you know the subsidy that in those countries especially in america and europe it's the markets which determine the efficiency or the driven the prices also but no if you look at uh, the kinds of uh, uh, you know areas where the american governments were providing subsidies almost everything that the farmers were doing as far as dairy sector is concerned is subsidized in in one form or the other or in one proportion or the other and that has actually built up the kind of milk production that we see the kind of a surge that we see in america and uh, european union is just because of the subsidies now what negative impact does these kind of subsidies mean for developing countries some years back uh, india had started importing uh, milk from denmark the landing price of the milk in india or from denmark was less than the production cost uh, that was seen in india this was primarily because uh, not the farms were very efficient in denmark but primarily because uh, there was a huge export subsidy which made the prices fall below the cost of production in india and that is why cheaper milk could come into come into the punjab province of india there was an uproar in punjab and eventually the government of india put a stop to the import of uh, milk from denmark we have also seen similar kinds of examples across the world you know the jamaican farmers uh, several years back had been spilling milk onto the streets because of the cheaper milk that came from england now that kind of thing has gone on uh, for all these years that wto talks have been in progress but uh, things have moved on to such a stage that while the subsidies of uh, dairy farmers uh, have not come down and uh, even in america the government uh, at an intervention price uh, tries to buy whatever surplus of milk uh, butter and also non fat that uh, you know dry milk that the farmers produce is is taken care of by the by the government they also in addition provide export subsidies uh, uh, to, to the farmers to export that uh, surplus that they have in this country so which means basically they are they are dumping uh, milk in the developing countries and india is one of the biggest targets because india is a huge market as i said earlier india is also the world's number one producer of milk now the entire focus is 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 now gradually getting on and the uh, you know they they all these countries are getting closer and closer to see that the market of india is taken care of so what is happening now is under the uh, european union and india free trade agreement that is under agreement the thrust of european union is basically to ensure that india opens up its uh, milk market as a result of which america can find a market for its surplus that it produces or uh, europe can find a market for its surplus and subsequently america would also be able to find a, mar a market for its surplus that it produces so india is is uh, uh, opening up and under the 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 pressure is that we should reduce Our duties by 90 percent, so that cheaper milk and cheaper milk products can come into India. But what is not being discussed, or what India is not trying to raise, is what will it, uh, what will be the impact of uh, these cheaper imports and highly subsidised imports into uh, one livelihood security of the Indian dairy farmers. B as to what the Indian farmers would require uh, would mean also the the impact it has on consumers and also the entire sectors would sector would would get a Uh, would 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 get a kick in the sense that uh, you know this is one sector which has held on to farmers the kind of agrarian distress that we see in the country if it is still uh, less as compared to what we can foresee uh, would would be happening in the years to come it's because the dairy sector comes uh, as a rescue uh, to 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 our own farmers and finally if you look at uh, the agreement uh, the european union india fta uh, what european union is ensuring is that the export of indian milk products from from india is not allowed in um, in european union because uh, under the sanitary and phytosanitary measures they they say that indian cows are not well kept and so means the milk is not safe for human consumption and so therefore they will restrict the import of milk from india but as far as the indian market is concerned they want all the barriers to go and also all the geographical indications they have for their various milk and dairy products needs to be protected so which means basically india will be providing a bigger market opportunity for european union products and it's not only european union which is eyeing the the indian market it's also the under the australia india fta and also the uh, the new zealand india fta and also uh, the you know in the days to come we'll have the us uh, india fta uh, becoming all very actively proactively uh, you know being being negotiated in 
a manner that uh, the dairy sector will come under assault from all the major milk producers of the world. So the, the, uh, the, the, the choice before this country is to see how we can protect our dairy sector, how we can provide its a kind of enabling environment so that we can build the capacity within the country, providing more income into the hands of the people and also ensuring that the livelihood security of the masses is ensured. That I think is the crux of the dairy development program that India must focus on. Thank you.